Merry Christmas to you. Oh, do, 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 do. Sometimes there's a curve in it, and that's natural. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast, everybody. My name is Josh. Today, wow, Snarkmas Day, something or other. It's in the 20s, at least. Today, we're talking about the million messages I got yesterday on Instagram about this new Ruby Frank video about her talking. About her saying she's not giving two of her younger kids Christmas. And so let's figure out why. Because I'm sure there's a really good reason and explanation for Ruby Frank to do something egregious with her children. Let's let's take a listen, shall we? Okay. So for the past two days, it's been a snarkmas miracle. We've got Ruby Frank doing something absolutely stupid that we can talk about and we need to, because it's not just about being stupid. It's about being a bad parent and she's giving parenting courses. So, okay. And Aaron Williams and Tara Henders Blanderson and all the other ones <laughs> released a dance video that I'm going to snark on with so much joyous joy in my heart. It's going to be awesome. We're going to break it down like a football play with circles and talk about people and i think we're gonna and some new characters are gonna enter in and we're gonna look at their videos it's gonna be great but that's not gonna be till tomorrow so you're gonna have to wait because what day is tomorrow 23rd christmas eve eve so on christmas eve eve and christmas eve i'm gonna be doing rap with me guitar playing chill out i'm so glad snarkmas is over after tomorrow what a finale the aaron williams hilarious video i'm very very excited about that so this isn't going to be a super long video, I don't think. I know I always say that, but it's only three minutes. So let's see what we can pull out of this video. And then we'll go through our channel. We got to talk about them specifically as a family vlogger, where they came from, where they are now, because that's what we've been doing over Snarkmas. We've been covering the family vloggers that I generally cover and seeing how far down the rung they have all fallen. And we got to understand why. And so we'll talk about that today. So let's get to this garbage video. You know, listening to Ruby Frank is going to make you, you know have diarrhea and stomach problems and a headache and you're gonna lose brain cells and all the all the things you say because she really is that person she really sits here up on her high horse on her mormon high horse thinking she's a good parent and she's not so let's do it hey cm hey cm you good boy all right let's watch it i'm scared to share this because knowing people these days i don't know if people are gonna you know yeah they are we all are and if you're scared to share it I mean, you got to understand that from a psychological perspective. Why? You're scared to share it because of people's opinions about this shitty thing you're about to say. So that speaks more volumes than anything else, is that you know that this is going to cause a stir because what it is is wrong. You know it's wrong. You know what you're about to say is ridiculous and stupid and wrong. And that's why you're nervous to say it. If, you were, if you're going to stand by what you're going to do, then you wouldn't have said that to begin the whole thing off. So right off the top, she knows this is going to be an unpopular opinion. And so that's... That sounds like Ruby, though. How well, they're going to respond. Um, so Kevin and I, we have two. Well, we have six children. The two youngest. Six, um, you know, child paid actors is what they are. Well, they're not. Sorry, they're not paid. She doesn't pay her kids uh, at all, which is crazy because her whole channel is built on the backs of her children. And now that some of the kids are gone, she's got another video. We're going to we're going to break down, not snark on. We're going to break down this other video about how everything is changing. And she cries and all shit. Everybody's going away for school and different things. And basically their channels for all intents and purposes. It's done. Right. So she's this is why she's pivoting to trying to be a parenting coach. Please don't be a parent. Don't be a parenting coach, please. For whatever. If you exploited your children for basically most of their lives, you cannot be a parenting coach. You already failed. Don't hire somebody who thinks exploiting their kid children for money, giving away their privacy and punishing them online and send them to, to camps for eight months, sleeping on a beanbag chair, taking off their bathroom door. Please don't take parenting advice from this type of person. And she's getting paid to do this. A lot of money, probably. Oh, my God. Are showing. That's like getting diabetes advice from Willy Wonka. It's like taking weight loss advice from Nikki Avocado. Don't take his advice. It's like taking cooking advice from Micah. Okay, don't do, you know. Don't ask Micah how to do things. It's like taking decorating advice from Love Meg. <laughs> it's like taking minimal advice from Turtle Creek Lady, Joyce, or whatever her name is. It's like taking advice from me on what to buy at Hobby Lobby, okay? I'm telling you, 
don't take my advice, okay? All right, let's go. Long patterns of selfishness. They have been showing um, through their choices, their unwillingness to repent. Their- so she just said they're long whatever of whatever being kids. They're being kids, right? Everybody here, put your hand up if you have a kid. Have they ever made selfish decisions? Yep. They're kids, lady. That's what kids do. They're learning. Kids are selfish inherently. Not all kids. My, actually, my kids aren't selfish at all. I mean, to, with each other, they're sort of like selfish with their toys. Like they're very much. But with their friends, they are very generous and giving. So I guess not all kids are selfish. I'm, I, but I'm saying is a lot of choices that kids make. They're going to make bad choices. My kids get in trouble for making stupid choices all the time. Am I going to take Christmas away from them? No. But she's basically, here's the thing that we know about Ruby. is she puts on these enormous weights on her children's shoulders to be like adults and their children. To act like adults, to have the behavior like adults, to do this. She's, she's like, it's like she's running a prison camp. Okay? And this is something we've noticed since day one. Like her five-year-old doesn't make her lunch, so she wants her to starve. Because that's, that is an outcome of her decision that she forgot to make her lunch and she wants her to be hungry. That is not a parent, everybody. That is a warden. She is a warden of a prison. Okay? She thinks this is all going to end up very good being this strict with her kids. It's, you're, it's, you're not. Your kids will hate you. They will absolutely hate you. And they already do. Let's be real. But so I don't know how old her youngest are, but they're pretty young. So what she's saying here is these young kids have made bad decisions, been selfish, and they are fa- they fail to repent. What she means there is like the Mormon idea of repentance, okay? Mormons like Catholics have to repent of their sin. They have to go to their bishop and they have, I don't know if the young kids do, but I know the adults do. They have to go to their bishop and they have to tell their bishop, you know, I was soaking. And the bishop's like, well, explain more while I write it down and put it in your file. Right? They have to confess their sin in order for that sin to be absolved. It's very much like Catholics. Very weird and nothing like what the Bible says, by the way. Anyway, that's the Mormon speak that she's saying. They are they're refusing to feel bad about their decisions and repent. Their unwillingness to feel sorrow over some pretty egregious choices that they've made. Um, I'm glad she doesn't say those egregious choices, even though you guys are all asking what they probably are, because I don't want those out there on the internet and her kids don't. And I'm surprised she didn't tell us, but I'm glad she didn't because she's done that with Chad, his egregious decision to, well, I don't think she told us what it was, but it was pretty bad. Probably exchanging nudes, likely masturbating or something sexual with a girl or a boy, whatever the case may be. They sent him off to that wilderness camp, remember? So she's the, 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 the depths that she's willing to go to correct her children are crazy. Like sending one of her children off for months to live in the wilderness. I could never do that. I could never be without my kids for that long. Give me a week or two. Sure. Sure. But months, months and months and months. So we already know her pattern of parenting is something happened regardless of its scope and the, the punishment always far outweighs what they did. Please don't let this one be a judge or on a jury, okay? So her punishments are always, always insane. Like, mind-blowingly, way out of proportion with what the kid did. And this is what's happening here. So, Kevin and I have decided that we are going to give the gift of truth to them this year for Christmas. This language is absolutely disgusting, too, by the way. We're going to give you guys the gift of truth. Does she think that makes this better by saying something so stupid like that? Instead of giving our children love and compassion and forgiveness and grace, like the Bible, even sure the Book of Mormon even says it, we're going to give them the gift of shit for your behavior. This is called payback, everybody. There's no grace. There's no understanding. What they're teaching their children here is that grace and forgiveness doesn't exist. That's the most dangerous thing I've ever heard because they will then take this behavior and learn it and then forward that on in their relationships. So when they're in a relationship, say a marriage, okay, and that person does something egregious, quote unquote, they will not offer forgiveness. They will only offer punishment because it's all they've ever known. We are going to give them the gift of boundaries and we're going to give them the gift of repentance. Well, you guys, your gifting is shitty. You suck at gift giving. Let's be real. So gifts of truth is what she's saying here. We're going to give them the gift of forgiveness, repentance, and boundaries. Okay. These aren't gifts, everybody. 
they're not gifts at all. These are parenting tactics. Sure. You can see the gifts of truth. This must be a Mormon thing because this isn't in the Bible. None of this is in the Bible. I mean, there's spiritual gifts, but this, I don't know. What she, I wonder if she's doing this, if it's not directly tied to Mormonism. So, so we sat down with them and we, we told these two, um, what our expectations oh. were yeah. again. And we let them know how deeply sorrowful we've been because of the choices that they've been making. Let me get this right. So let's, let's, let's just, let's play this out a little bit. Let's have a seat. Family meeting time, everybody. You two youngins who are a-holes. Um, we are deeply sorrowful for the decisions that you have made. No, you're not. And plus, it's not your place to be sorrowful for their decisions. We are, we, we can say, hey, look, we're very disappointed in the decisions that you've made. We don't think that they're smart. We think that we raised you differently. And we're wondering what's going on. You're dead. I mean, there's, there's obviously room for conversation. I'm not saying don't do corrective behavior for your children. Of course do. But what I'm saying is that sitting down saying, we're hurt over your decisions, which puts it on them to, but what you're saying is that you're hurting us with your decisions when it's them they're hurting. And again, that's selfish. And how it's affected their teachers at school. It's affected their peers. It's affected um, our home, the sibling. Who are these weird Mormons? Things, um, Oh shit, that's a big cup, lady. <laughs> Holy shit. You know, that's full of Mormon wine. And we just laid it out very clear. And we told them that this... I wonder... Okay, so she's in a Zoom call, I guess, is where this came from. Are there people in the Zoom call like, turn the camera off. And they turn the camera off and they look at each other like, are we paying for this? Are we paying to hear this shit? She's going to literally take Christmas away from her children. We're paying to hear this advice. This is, again, not only is this uber disgustingly cocky, like you're going to flaunt and flex the fact you're not going to give your children Christmas and you're going to play it off like you're good for this, like you're a good parent, like you're giving advice to this. Ew. Here Go in your bed. Are... Go in your bed. Want to say hi? Want to say hi? What are you doing? Who was up there? Was there a robber up there? How are you doing? Mm. He's a good boy. Okay, go on your bed. I don't know where was I. So she's basically, yeah, she's in a meeting. People are paying to hear this advice. Holy shit. Not going to be visited by Santa. I gotta rewind that a bit. So, so I hear the whole content. going to be visited by Santa. He told them that this year they are not going to be visited by Santa. I don't know. Please, if there are children in the room, make sure they don't hear this, okay? Uh, I'll give you a second or two. Da -da 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 -da, or mute it or whatever, okay? Um, because I love Santa. And I don't want to speak disparagingly against Santa. Because Santa is my bro. And I love him. My kids love him. Santa is amazing. I've had conversations with Santa. He's a good kid. But anyway, what she's saying here is our children are not going to be visited by Santa. Which is kind of an odd thing to say considering Santa generally only brings my kids one present. So are they missing out on the Santa gift? And why wouldn't Santa, because Santa, are they on the naughty list? Is, is that what's happening here? And also, does that mean that there's no Christmas gifts? And if that's the case, then is Santa providing all of the gifts for your kids for Christmas? Or is she just saying that to say, to like not say the exact words of, I'm literally taking Christmas away from my children. The most important event of the year for children. I'm taking it away. Is that, I don't know what's going on here, but it's all shit. So... They will, and we prep them. We we let them know that the Christmas morning, their four older siblings will be getting Christmas presents to open, and that they will have the gift of love from their dad and I. Oh my God! Stop saying stupid shit like this. Okay, your your four siblings are gonna have gifts, and they didn't say. And you guys are going to get the gift of love. So does that mean that the other four siblings are not going to get the gift of love? Why does she say shit like this? This is such Christianese garbage speak. I hate when people beat around the bush with like scriptural or religious talk. Okay. When what you're doing is disguising the shittiest thing you could possibly do to kids with religiosity. With, by saying stupid shit like this. Instead this year we're going to give you guys the gift of love. Which is in the form of punishment. Complete and utter punishment. Remember I told you guys about the birthday that I've never forgotten where I was a bad kid and I was eight and they took away from me and I never forgot. I'll never forget it. 
do I do was am I a better person for that? No, I'm not a better person for that. Did I learn a lesson? No, I didn't. I still did stupid shit. Because I was eight. These are kids, everybody. Doing this to kids is not good. It isn't good. Okay? So the gift of love, while you're sitting there sulking, you're all and they're probably gonna overdo it on the other four kids, right? And because they want this, she wants this to hit home really hard, right? She really wants it to be like, I want this to be a power hit to their gut. When their kids, when they're in their opening, and you know what? I wouldn't even put it past her to give her other kids something that the little kids wanted. So when they open it, that's the thing they wanted. And it goes to them now. This is a vitriolic, disgusting human being who has no business being a parent. Look, there are all types of bad parents out there. And I was just speaking with somebody on Instagram, one of my friends. And she said, you know, there's another mommy vlogger coming after me for coming after mommy vloggers. And they use this excuse like, why are you mom shaming? You have to come after moms. You have to look for moms, mom. And they use this term like moms, like as if like that they're the weakest person on earth. When in, in fact, good moms are like the salt of the f-ing earth. Okay. Good moms make the world go round. Good dads too. Good parents. Let's be real. But good moms are probably the strongest people I've ever met. And so to use this excuse to like, you know, you're only coming out to break down. No, 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 no. I go after shitty moms like this. And for good reason, this reason. And if you stand up for these types of people, you are the problem. You are the problem, okay? If you stand these people after knowing what I've told you and what we've uncovered over the past year and a half, then you are the problem. You don't want to see the issue, and that's fine. You don't have to, but don't come after me like I'm wrong because I'm effing right 100% of the time when it comes to the exploitation of children and how wrong it is. And so when you say these stupid things and you're saying, mom shaming, mom shaming, I all of a sudden don't care what you have to say anymore because you, you clearly have no other argument. Nobody can ever and has ever in the year and a half I've done this, even though I've offered up the opportunity for you to come talk to me about it. Where have I gotten this wrong? What is right about this? Is there any redeeming qualities about any of the things I've said about exploiting children for money? Let's not forget Ruby Frank has made millions of dollars from her family off of her family. Okay. And likely doesn't pay them shit. So when I see this type of video where she's all cocky about being a disgusting human being and a terrible parent, I, 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 I'm like, you must live in the craziest bubble because e, your friends probably, I don't think her family even talks to her anymore. Because we want them to really have a visceral experience that hits them. So we talked about this. So I, I know I'm topping a lot because this is a really important video to unpack. Okay. I'm going to do break it down sentence by sentence because everything she said at this point has been packed full of shit. And so we have to unshitify it. So you guys don't take this advice. Visceral response means almost like when somebody, you know, cringe, the, the cringe that you see when you watch someone like Jess fam or somebody and you cringe, you're like, Ugh, that is a visceral response to something. They want to induce a visceral response by punishing their children. It's not enough just to say, Hey, miss, we want a visceral response. It's not enough to say, Hey, you're crying. You're sad. You're in, they want visceral responses. Okay. These are children, everybody. They're not teenagers. They are. I'm not sure how old they are, but I don't even think they're over 10 if I'm right. Or maybe one of them is 10 and one of them is a little younger. But these are children. You should not want visceral you know, responses from your children unless it's joy or laughter or excitement. You should not want negative visceral responses in your children. You know why? Because that's where trauma happens. That's where this trauma starts. Trauma comes from visceral reactions. The visceral reactions come from th- things that they can't control outside their nature that they... They obviously, and again, what she's saying here is, is, is actually, I'm sorry I had to go on this little tangent here, but what she's saying is that these kids aren't, are are making choices. Okay. In the end that they don't know that's going to lead to them not having Christmas. Right. And so that's called consent. We're going to go back to this idea of informed consent. She doesn't realize, and it's clear now that informed consent is really important because these children also don't realize the negative ramifications of being on this channel for their their full whole life, but she expects them to. And so that's kind of eye opening. She expects them to have, you know, understand the, 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 the consequences of their decisions, but she doesn't do the same thing. Her kids hate her. And that's really, at the end, at the core of it, regardless of her being a family vlogger, that's really heartbreaking for any parent. So up until now, I was really hoping that like keeping them home from school and wiping the floorboards would like really bring pain. Like, So let's unpack that now. Oh my God. I said short video, I lied. 
So here's another thing that Ruby Frank tried. T keeping your kids home from school to wipe baseboards. <laughs> what? Keeping kids home from school is not a punishment. They love that shit. Are you serious? What? Again, don't ever punish your children by keeping them home from school. School is a punishment. So you're going to go to school. And as soon as you get home from school, your ass is going to wipe down floorboards. That's what you do there. What is... Who is she? Who, where does she get this idea? Who is she listening to? Like, oh my gosh, I really want to change this behavior that I've been exhibiting. <clears throat> and it didn't that you, did you hear what she just said there? Might have been a Freudian slip that I, oh, she's saying it from their perspective. Never mind. It, it didn't, they, like, it wasn't painful for them. They're like, oh yeah, we get to stay home from school and clean floorboards. This is kind of fun. Was I hope the teachers are listening to this. So why was your kid absent? Well, they were bad, so I kept them home to clean the house. Really? CPS intensifies. What? No, you don't do that. No, you don't. What an idiot. Like, ah, uh, so, you know, they've had these visceral experiences. Uh, you know, and I want more. So, and, they, and I want the worst one. They haven't, they haven't affected them. It's so the only visceral experience they had so far that she's told us about is that she kept them home from school to clean. And that's what you thought would change behavior? Okay, well, this is why you're getting this all wrong, Ruby Frankie. Because none of the shit you're doing is is what you're doing is right. Uh, there's a podcast called the Dad Challenge Podcast. It's an audio podcast, everybody. I want you to go ahead out and listen to some, I forget what it's called. There's an episode there. I think it's called My Teenager's an A-Hole or something like that. Or it's one with Dr. Kirk Honda, okay? Who's the sexiest psychologist in Seattle. Um, and he says, you know, when we're talking about our teenagers and our kids and how to how to parent them properly and how to overcome major issues, it starts with a bond, Okay, it starts with a bond and it starts pretty young. Okay, and it can be developed. But if your children don't have a bond with you, they will act out. They'll act out anyway. But if you have a solid, trustworthy bond with your children, they were they are way less likely to do stupid shit. And if they do the stupid shit, which they will, they'll come to you with it. Because the bond that you have is 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 indestructible, meaning they trust you to say, I did the stupid shit. I know when I come to you, I'm not gonna be sent off to a wilderness camp or have to sleep on a beanbag chair without a bathroom door for eight months. Okay. They know that. So what, what she's telling me here and what she's failed to realize is that she doesn't have a bond with any of her children. None of them. The bond that they've developed is through vlogging because again, when the camera turns on, they are someone else When the camera's off. They're completely probably more gross. And she's showed us that she's gross. So if you really want to know what good parenting looks like, and I'm not saying I am, but I understand from Dr. Kirk's perspective what it means to develop a bond. And when I heard that from him, the first thing I did was put that in my brain and then developed a stronger bond and always put that at the forefront of everything I did as a parent. How does this affect our bond? Okay, if they did something stupid, when I punish them, how does it affect the bond? And how can I gain this bond and make it stronger so that when they do something stupid, they know they can call me or don't do the stupid thing. My bond with my younger children is very, 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 very tight. My bond with my older boys, it's not so tight because they came to us a little bit late and obviously they struggle with trauma and it's just, it's different. It's a different world, but we do have a very strong bond regardless. The bond is everything. And so what she's trying to do here is replace the bond with punishment and it's never going to work guys. Let me tell you here as a pair, as a kid who was punished severely for the stupidest things too, and some of the bad things I did, okay? And you'll hear all about it in my story when I hit 100,000 subscribers, and it's crazy. But let me tell you from some kid who was severely beaten sometimes, okay? Punishing children for, for almost nothing too, to be honest with you, is ridiculous. And I sometimes catch myself doing that here, mirroring my mother's behavior when it comes to punishment for no reason. And then I, I, I see it, I react, and I reverse. And every time, if you've done something wrong with your kids where you've overpunished them for whatever reason, it's never too late to reverse it and sit them down and say, look, I overreacted. You're not grounded for four weeks for missing your math test or whatever, or miss skipping a class. I get angry. I do the punishment. And then I, I will always sit them down. If I've overreacted, if my wife has said, look, that's too much. We talk about it. I'll sit them down and I will apologize. But I'll also say, hey, it's still not cool what you did, but I overreacted. Let's reverse that. And here's the new revised punishment. If you can't do that as a parent, you're doing something wrong. Humility is really important. And I'm not saying you should always do that because sometimes you are right and justified in the way that you delve out punishments. I'm not saying you shouldn't punish kids. You should. Okay. What I'm saying is that there is, a, if you have no humility as a parent, those kids are going to learn that and they are never going to be wrong ever. And they are never going to have humility or grace or understanding or forgiveness for anybody else. 
that is what she doesn't do. Her kids are going to be just like her. And that's scary. Because they're so numb. And so the more numb your child is, the greater experience, the, big, the bigger the outcome, they need to wake them up. <sighs> My blood pressure is rising right now. So you've given your kids so many negative visceral responses that they've become numb to it. What does that tell you, everybody? It tells you that Ruby Frank punishes first before anything else. There's no bond. There's no love. There's no grace. There's no understanding. It's punishment, punishment, punishment all the time, no matter what. Right? Remember when that kid, she dropped the plate and, she, and her kid started crying. That video is very telling as to who Ruby is when the camera's off. Okay? That kid was deeply afraid of the wrath of his mother because of that her favorite casserole plate broke. That is a very eye-opening video about her, okay? So what she's saying here is I've punished my kids so much that they've become numb to it. That doesn't work anymore. And so you have to do something bigger and bigger and bigger, like sending them off to a wilderness camp to straighten them, like making them sleep on a beanbag chair for eight months, like not letting them have friends, like taking everything away from them, like taking their, their stuff away from them and selling it back to them, like making them skip Christmas, giving them nothing. This woman does not deserve to be a mother. And I cannot believe that people pay for this advice. <laughs> you're, you're not going to push a boulder with just your hands. You need some real leverage. And the these kids aren't boulders, asshole. These kids are literal clay that you mold and shape. Okay? You have the responsibility here to shape your kids the way you want them to turn out. And by considering them boulders of behavior that you need to move, by getting leverage to do that, You've told them you guys are almost immovable in the way that you are and how bad you are. So I need more leverage to hurt you more in order to fix that. But do you know how they got to be boulders? By you. They were in that position because of you, Ruby. Everything that your kids do is a mirror reflection of how you have dealt with things, how you raise them, and how your behavior is. It's all on you here. And so instead of saying, look, how do we break down this boulder? She says, well, it's going to be big, so I need leverage to, to move it farther. You guys, don't miss this shit. This is crazy what she's saying here. So in order, we've built these kids up to be so hardened by the punishments we've given them, it doesn't even affect them anymore. So now we have to overdo the punishment even more to shock them. These are children. Children. Oh, my God. The biggest leverage that a little child has is probably Santa Claus. And so, well, then take that away. Mom of the year. I hope these kids have teachers that watch this and have people in their lives that can counteract this in their lives. I hope they're watching the shit and saying, this is absolutely the most wrong thing I've ever heard in my life. Ruby and sitting here on her shitty bed with her, her, her smug little smile and her shitty necklace sitting here telling everybody how not to parent is probably the best thing we could have gotten for Christmas. I, I expressed to them that, I love your soul more than anything in this world. And I literally would do anything to, to invite you into repentance. And Stop with the Christianese fucking language lady. I would invite you to repent. These are kids. These are children. I think even by Mormon standards, they're innocent. Maybe not. I don't know. But what she's saying here is, is, is an alluding. She's alluding to a fundamental principle of that. If my kids end up being bad, they will end up in the outer darkness. And that is every Mormon parent's worst nightmare is to not be with them in the afterlife. Okay. On the planet, whatever planet they get. And he's a professor at BYU. So I'm sure he gets a better planet. But what she's saying here is very scary as well. And this is why Mormons, this is very interesting. I'm sorry. It's so interesting. And this is why Mormons often will outcast family members who become ex Mormons. They won't even talk to them anymore because it hurts them so badly that they don't even want to be a part of that because it's already destroyed them that she's saying, I need to fix all these behaviors or they're going to end up basically in hell is what she's saying. That's what she's saying here. So every decision she's making is based on this fundamental understanding of Mormon principles, which is already a bullshit, another big ass bullshit lie. It is fake. It's lie. It's terrible. And so she's parenting based on a cult religion is what she's doing. I don't care. You guys out there who are Mormons come at me. It's cultish. And this is why proof is in the pudding. I know parents say that I'll do, I would do anything for my kid, but really what I think most parents are saying is I would give anything to you if no, that's not what most parents are saying. I think when most parents say I would do anything for my kids is that they would stand up for them doing and giving are two different things. 
I would do anything for my kid. Like if someone was bullying them, if someone, if a teacher, you know, and it has happened, have done things or they, you know, they've had injustices dealt to them. I would do anything to help them in that area. Of course I would. I would not give them anything. That's stupid. That's what she's, that's what she's saying here. Okay. But what Ruby isn't saying here, well, she is sort of saying it is that she will, she, there is no level of what punishment she will give her kids. She thinks that's giving. She thinks that is parenting. And so when I say I'll do anything for my kids, it means I will protect them at all costs. I will die for my children. That's what it means. Not I'm going to buy you a f effing bike because yours broke. That's stupid. And she, again, this is her giving parenting advice without any understanding of that at all. I, I would pay any price monetarily. I don't know how many parents are actually willing to put any boundary in place that would okay. bring a turnaround. So she's seeking the turnaround. That's all she's seeking here. She's seeking behavioral change. And I think as all parents, we can, we can be there with her and say, look, we've all wondered how, where have we gone wrong? What can we do better? I'm the same, I'm the same boat. And we, we figure it's this moment where, what, what can we do to make this all change? When in the end, Dr. Kirk was right all along. It's about the bond. It might be the opposite of what you're doing as a parent. It really might be. It might be like, okay, well, they have no, they have nothing. And I'm taking it all away because they're so bad and blah, 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 blah. Maybe the answer is the opposite is to give them more to be trusted with. Right. We did that. We said, Hey kid, we're going to give you more, but the hammer is way heavier. Now you have way more responsibility because of the things that we're giving you. You know what? Your, your curfew was 11. Now there's no curfew, but you be smart with that shit. Okay. Oh, you have this phone now. Well, here's, we're trusting you with this phone. And the hammer is way heavier now because we're giving you more. So when you do mess up, if you do, hopefully you don't, the hammer is heavy. Do you agree to these terms? And they say, yes, of course they're going to say yes. Right. But they know right off the top, the hammer is heavy. But if you don't give them any of the big responsibilities, the hammer shouldn't be heavy. Right. Should be, the hammer should be light because you, you say, Hey, look, you know, I'm, you're basically taking it on that you're going to do those things. But if you give them more, you'd actually probably be pretty surprised. Maybe, I don't know. Don't take my advice. That would really bring repentance. So that is our gift. Our gift is... That's such a nice gift. You guys are such good gift givers. Are you my in-laws? <laughs> ...is a reflection of truth to our child. Of This is how selfish you have shown up. And it's not like once or twice. It's not one week. It, this is like months and months and months and months and months you have shown up this Maybe you should be there as a parent then, instead of vlogging every moment of your life and putting milk on cake and shit. That's your fault here. This is not their fault. You expect this behavior to change. You probably say a bunch of things. You punish them. You expect it to change without developing a bond or creating a plan or whatever. You just expect it to change and it doesn't. And so you just keep piling it on. You are crazy, lady. You are. This is like, this is very scary behavior for a person, to be honest with you. Very scary. I think a lot of us are looking at ourselves as parents and saying, I am exhibiting some of these scary behaviors myself. And thank God I'm seeing it now. Recognize it first, everybody. Then you can fix it. I was the same. I really was early on in adoption because we raised a 10 year old, and a six year old with two babies. Right. And so it was different. We had to learn really differently and learning afterwards sucks, but at least we're learning. At least you're recognizing it. She's not recognizing it. She's doubling down. Selfish. And so I'm going to reflect truth to you equally reflect truth here. I'm going to reflect some truth to you, Ruby. You are the worst parent I've ever seen. And that's saying something. And the, and the reason why is because you actually think you are good. You think that you are faith based parenting. You think that what you're doing is right. That's why you're the worst because you're actually the worst and you don't think it is, which is about the equivalent of Santa not coming. Oh, I'm sure it is. Okay. So that wasn't very short. So I wish I could have been a fly on the wall for the rest of that because, oh my gosh, if whoever is leaking this shit, continue to leak it, please. That was terrible. Everybody absolutely atrocious. We broke down every point. Let me be real with you here for a second. And I think, you know, this Chad and everybody else who's uh, sharing everybody who's left their family. I'm not sure they are coming back maybe for Christmas and shit like that, but they done. They done. I'm sure that most of their kids will leave the faith as well. Ex-Mormons, you know, kids are leaving Mormonism in droves. Adults are. Mormonism is a dead religion. It's dying quickly. The only thing, the only reason they're surviving it to this point is because they have hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars. So, and they can just, they'll, they be there always, but 
People are waking up to this bullshit. And at, at her, at the fundamental levels of her and her husband, you see here what it looks like to be a fundamental Christian, a Mormon, and how you raise your kids in this type of world. This isn't how it works anymore, everybody. Parenting has changed since we were young. Everything has changed. And if we don't adapt, we are going to lose our children. We are going to lose them to the world and we're going to lose them in our families. Think to yourself in a, for a minute here. I know this is super not, this is not happy. But think to yourself in a minute. As a parent right now, who have older kids who might be struggling with behavior issues. It does suck. Okay, I promise you it sucks. But think to yourself every time these things happen. In 20 years when that kid has grown up, okay, maybe married, has children. Hopefully they've survived and they're not in jail. Let's say they've done that. Okay, good. They've gone to college. They made some stupid decisions like we all did. We all have, okay? What are your relationship going to be like when they are parents, when they are married, when they're in their adults? Think about that for a minute. And at this moment in, in time, the, the thing that they have done, how will this affect their future anyway? For real though, is missing a, a period of school going to really affect their future? Is, you know, shoplifting really going to affect your future? Could, <laughs> depends where you live, I guess. California won't. Um, is, you know, sexting another girl really going to be that big of a deal in the end is all these kind of things that you think are wrong. Think about that in the context of their future, because now you have the ability to give informed consent that they don't, meaning that you can now make a choice to the punishment you're going to give them to what it's going to end up being later. You can see the outcome because you were there basically. Right? So, and I'm just waking up to this now. I'm having an epiphany right now. You guys are seeing my brain have an epiphany, which is really good. So in t think of to yourself, no matter what your kid has done wrong, okay? And some shit they do is bad. So obviously I'm saying, this is why it's going to end in levels. Is what they've done right now really going to affect their future? And if so, how? And if it's really not, then really chill, okay? Do what you got to do. You know, I'm not going to, you know, no PS5 for the rest of the night. You know, I'm, I'm having an epiphany right now. It's really, it's waking me up. I'm not lying right now. This is incredible for me to see this and to understand how to be a better parent because of what Ruby says here. So in the end is if that thing that they're doing is going to really affect their future, then obviously you have to figure it out, but be real as it, put yourself in their position as when you were a kid and you were getting in trouble, what would you rather your parents done knowing who you are now? Just like shitty math and Pythagorean theorem. I'm never going to use that. Never have. I'm 42. I've never used math long division, especially. I don't know how to do it anymore, but Wow, what a very eye-opening video. I'm actually moved at her stupidity so that it helps us become better parents. But please, Ruby, if you're watching, and I hope you are, give your kids Christmas. Don't be a douchebag. At least two or three gifts a piece. Don't give them nothing. Okay, that's absolutely ridiculous because they're going to hate you for that. And now everybody knows, and their kids and their friends and everybody, when they go to school, what are they afraid? What would you get for Christmas? Nothing. Why? Because I am a bad kid. That's why I didn't get Christmas. Because I made bad choices. But you're 10. What bad choices did you make? Did you kill somebody? No. Did you sell meth? No. What'd you do? I don't know what I did. I sprayed my sister with a hose. I didn't make my bed. I swore. I don't know what I did. Again, these kids are not making life-altering decisions at this point. I don't think so. Anyway, I don't think. I mean, and if they are, really? I don't think so. So, wow. Very eye-opening video. Tomorrow is going to be snarkmas. Like we're going to continue to do snarkmas, but like covering the snarking, we're done. We're going to be doing rapping. We're going to be playing music. We're going to have some festive times. I'm very excited about that. Take a deep breath, everybody. <sighs> do not be like Ruby Frank. Don't do it. Save your kids. Build the bond. Be better. Because you're amazing, incredible, and valuable. And if you've woken up to any of these things here, do not feel bad about your parenting. Recognize the things that you see that we talked about. Change them for the better and watch the bond grow. Very important. And it's Christmas. Don't ever take Christmas with your kids. I don't care how bad they are. Okay? This should always be good memories. No matter what went on in your year, Christmas is a time of redemption and family and love. And it always should be. Punish them other ways, Ruby. Don't do it here. You're valuable. Gorgeous. Not you, Ruby. Everybody else watching. And I'll see you tomorrow.